Hey, what's up my spaghettis? It's Rachel Janetti and I'm back. Ugh. Hey, what's up my spaghettis? It's Rachel Janetti and I'm here with another kind of quick video because today we're talking about sweet, sweet revenge. And boy, is it sweet. <laughs> you guys probably remember if you actually watched the video, not many of you did, but uh, my Steven Spielberg video, uh, I think two weeks, in, uh, two weeks ago now. And uh, I kind of warned him and to Steven Spielberg. I want to say that he's been warned. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I was kind of annoyed that uh, Netflix movies, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted, I was um, kind of annoyed that some Netflix, uh, actually all Netflix movies might be taken out of the running for, uh, you know, the Oscars. So um, I'm just coming to you today with a new development because... Revenge happens a lot. I know I look very tired. I'm doing a lot of college stuff right now. College is stressful. I wish I didn't have to do it, but I do. I have to go through dorming stuff. Hopefully my roommate next year doesn't care about me just randomly talking to my phone. But uh, today we're gonna be talking about antitrust laws and why you should care. Not actually. I'm kidding. Uh, we're talking about the Oscars once again, um, because that's all I talk about apparently. So there's this thing called antitrust laws, and if you don't know what antitrust laws are, they just kind of, you know how in Spongebob, uh, the Krusty Krab is like the only thing that um, the fish go to? And then there's like the chum bucket, but the chum bucket isn't really competition. But the thing is, the chum bucket needs to be there, so the Krusty Krab doesn't have uh, one singular market. They're, so they're there to control their prices, to control their ingredients, stuff like that. It's a healthy competition, and a trust is when uh, companies, big companies, buy up other businesses so they can have a monopoly on the market. A little bit boring, I know. We're gonna go with it. This article... <laughs> is Oscars limits for streaming movies may violate antitrust laws and the DOJ warned the Academy about doing the battle with Netflix was Rachel right I think Rachel was right I think Rachel was right Rachel was probably right Rachel was right so basically the gist of this article is um, if they limit the ability to nominate movies <laughs> from streaming services, sorry I got really close to the camera there, why? I don't know. Uh, if they limit the ability for streaming services to partake in the Oscars, then they have a monopoly on the market. So the US government has to step in then, which... Uh, it's quite funny because they're like, oh, we're going to do this because we're going to preserve the sanctity of film, even though they are production companies as well. Like, they're companies. You're not fooling anyone there, Steven Spielberg. Not even me. And I'm not that smart. As you guys can see here, I'm a little tired from today. I'm just, like, kind of done with everything, and I'm just kind of out of it. So it, the, the gist of the article is that um, the U.S. government might step in um, that I believe they have threatened the Oscars, um, Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Academy of the Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, sorry. They've told them that, uh, this cannot happen because this will suppress competition and this will make it easier for you to win Oscars. Because, uh, they are huge awards to win, they're huge designations, they're huge career boosters. They can make or break a career. It's kind of funny. Because I feel like history is kind of repeating itself at this time. Uh, we're nearing- sorry, I'm like trying to adjust. So we're nearing the roaring 20s of the 2000s. People are like so excited for the 19 like kind of like the 1920s to play out again. But the thing is like trusts were also a huge thing in the 1920s because they were uncontrolled kind of thing. Um, that's how Rockefeller got so rich and stuff like that and like... So if you're buying up the competition, it's the same thing as limiting it because you're just absorbing that competition. You get me? You get me. Then you're just giving yourself more money, basically. Especially if you're in the running for Oscars and you're 
on the board for the Oscars. Do you see where this could be a problem? I can. I don't think they vote on their specific topics, but I feel like there could be some uh, conflict of interest or lack thereof. If you get involved with the US government, then you know you're not in the right. You know you're not in the right when uh, the US government tells you to stop. Or maybe, unless you're a conspiracy theorist, then there's a whole different set of rules for you. I know I've been critical of people in the past, and I know I'm kind of critical of people in general. <laughs> oh, they say in the article, it's vital to, oh sorry, I'm gonna quote this. It's vital to give online video equal consideration. It makes movies accessible to people who couldn't otherwise go, enables both indie filmmakers as well as anyone whose project might have trouble surviving in a blockbuster-obsessed theatrical landscape. It's a lot to unpack, but I feel like they're right in that sense. I feel like they give uh, smaller creators, uh, not technically like YouTubers, like smaller creators, smaller directors, smaller production studios, the option, the uh, window to go through and to potentially make their video, their movie, their film a big thing. I want people to have an equal chance against these blockbusters because I watch some of these blockbusters and I have a few words. I have a lot of words. They take the time to think things through. They take the time to like realize that, oh, this is a plot hole. They have the, they might not have the amount of eyes on the project that uh, big production companies have, but they do have the dedication to their craft that they, that uh, older filmmakers may not have anymore. People who are making these blockbusters, I'm not liking them as much any anymore as I do indie films because I feel like indie films are more thought through, if that makes any sense. Of course, I don't expect everybody to share my same opinion, but I feel that people might need the option. If you're deciding an award based on what you believe people liked, you believe someone did the best, then um, why not let the people decide? I don't know. I just feel like uh, the big blockbusters that are coming out as of late are... I don't want to say bad. They're not bad. They're good. They're good movies. They're just not what they used to be. I remember watching, what was it, Jurassic Park as a kid. And I, I think I was about eight years old and I was way too young to be watching that. But I still watched it with my mom. Jurassic Park at that time was on top of its game. And I feel like since then, the storylines have not progressed as much as they used to. There are just different things that you can do and people in blockbuster movie cinema are not used to doing that. When you're in an indie film industry, when you have a small production company or if it's just you and a few friends that are making a film that find the parameters that you need to send your film into Netflix because there are parameters they have to hit, you have to film it on a certain camera, you have to edit it in a certain uh, format you have to export it a certain way and you have to label it a certain thing and your credits have to be something special it, there's a whole list of things that you need to do if you are in that industry and you have free reign for most part over your project and you're going to release it and you're going to give it to netflix and say here you go they have more of an input um, of course, Netflix has an input, but you have more of a intellectual input over it rather than if you had seven producers behind you um, telling you, you can't say this, you can't say that, you can't have this couple, no, this is going to look better, you need this actor or this actress. I feel like you have more control over it. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, but the world is changing. The world is going more focused on a user-based. So <laughs> this ran a little longer than I thought it was going to. I'm sorry, I kind of ranted at, oh, at the end a little bit, but um, I think I got my point across. I don't expect everybody to have the same opinion, and I just felt I needed to talk about this because it's kind of 
not revenge in a way, but <laughs> closure on a situation that I had previously spoken about. And I'm just happy you guys have watched this long. <sighs> I have hiccups. Anyway, um, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Rachel Janetti. You guys know the deal. For those of you who haven't, um, if you're new here, please hit that little subscribe button because I would love that. I want to get to 70 subscribers. Please, please subscribe. Anyway, uh, hit that bell icon if you want to turn on notifications for the Queen's Spaghetti. I don't know what to say right now because I'm very tired and I have so many forms to fill out. Have a great day. I'll see you next week. I don't know what video I'm going to make next week. Bye! <laughs>